Hey guys, it's Emma and welcome or welcome back to my channel and today is the beginning of the Buzzwordathon or the Buzzword Readathon hosted by um, Books and Lala and Gabby Reads and I'm super excited because I did participate in the last round and I have a vlog for it so I'll link that up here but yes so for this round it's all number words and numbers in book titles so I have quite quite a list of books on my TBR but I don't know how many I'm gonna get through and it's also the contemporary -thon weekend edition this weekend so I'm gonna save some of the books that I have for my buzzword of thon TBR that have words in the, you know numbers in the title but are also contemporary for the weekend I believe and try to start with fantasy for now so I think what I'm gonna do is read Three Dark Crowns by Kendara Blake. I saw that Kayla is reading this for her first read and I was just like, okay, sure. We'll just, I'll be reading the same thing and it'll be like an unofficial buddy read even though she has no idea I'm doing it. So Three Dark Crowns is a YA fantasy about these three sisters who each have three different powers, I believe, and they're separated and then they have to come back together and fight each other for like the crown. I don't know. It's a classic YA fantasy. The series finale five dark fates actually just came out so i've been seeing a lot of people reading it and it's just made me want to pick it up so i am probably going to pick that up in the next few minutes maybe i am uploading a video so i want to like make sure that's going smoothly and stuff so we shall see but i will update you guys when i'm like 50 pages into this maybe hey guys so sorry i never updated last night but it is now Tuesday the 19th of November and it is um four something in the afternoon I've just been doing a lot of job applications and um, not fun things like that but I have also read so last night I only read like 66 pages of Three Dark Crowns before going to bed because I got distracted by Hallmark Channel movies I'm not sorry about it <laughs> So yeah, I only read 66 pages and then I didn't update because I was literally falling asleep, but it's fine. So right now I'm up to page 143 and I'm actually really enjoying this. I'm not like totally obsessed and invested in the story to the point I can't put it down yet, which is always the goal, but I am enjoying it. And I was hoping to finish it today, but that might not happen. So we'll just see. Hey guys, so it's now like almost 7 and I'm kind of annoyed. Um, so I'm reading Three Dark Crowns and I'm now almost halfway into it. I'm thinking like 190 something pages in. And my least favorite thing just happened and I'm, I don't, I don't know. Like if you don't want any spoilers or whatsoever, then just fast forward until I'm not holding this book anymore. Okay, so basically, someone just got cheated on, and I've been cheated on before, and anytime I read it in a book, it makes me really upset, and it just, I, it's literally my least favorite thing to happen in a book, and in this, there was no reason for it. The way that it happened was really weird, I don't understand, and it just literally changed the way I feel about this book. Like, I was actually really enjoying this book, and now I'm just annoyed. <sighs> So now that I am annoyed with the book and I'm going to take a little bit of a break from it, I'm watching booktube right now, but I do have to do some jur bullet journaling that I've been putting off for days because it just takes so long. But I need to do a page for the Buzzword Readathon and Contemporary Thon Weekend. I think I'm just going to combine it onto one page. And then I also have to do a November wrap-up page. So now that I finally have an idea of like how I'm going to do it, I can do it. And I'm probably just going to do it while I watch a Christmas movie or booktube. But yeah, I don't know if I'm going to read more of Three Dark Crowns tonight because I'm still annoyed right now. I need to get over that before I can continue. But yeah, Ugh, I'm so annoyed. Hey guys, so it's now almost 8 and I thought I'd show you my progress on my bullet journal so far. Um, I've already been doing this for like 30 or 40 minutes and I've barely done anything, which you're about to see. But this is why I put off doing my bullet journal, so I'm just gonna keep cracking and watching. 
um, A Christmas Prince, the um, Netflix movie, because I love it. And it's just, I love royal romances, I love this series, and uh, it's just so good. So I'm gonna flip you guys around and show you the crazy state of my bed and what I've done. So yeah, I literally have just like things everywhere, my washi, a brown paper bag. I already had done the this page and this page the other day, so I just did this where I did some calligraphy with my Tombow. It's not great, but I was getting frustrated and it's taking forever, so yeah. Did that on the piece of an old Trader Joe's bag that I just like ripped. And there's little pieces everywhere. And then I put Buzzwordathon and the dates and then the prompt. And then I'm going to put in the books. I don't know if I'm going to put my full TBR. I guess I might. But I'm still thinking about that. And then this is what's really been taking me forever. It took me a while to get the title right. I'm obviously going to go over that with like marker or pen. And then to do all of these acorns, and they're not great, um, they look better on camera actually, but yeah. So I still have to go over all of this with pen and then color in every acorn. But I'm going to do, each acorn is going to have, you know, the number, you know, one, two, three, four, whatever. And since I've already read it ten books, I needed to do a big spread. So I have nine per side. And hopefully that'll be enough. I am reading quite a few graphic novels this month, so it just is adding up. But I think it'll look nice, and I'm going to draw in some other stuff, probably around the edges to, like, fill the page more. I don't know. So it is now after 9, but I'm just going to stop doing my bullet journal for today. So this is what I did. I went back and added the dates that I missed for my page counter, but I keep track of this on my phone, so even if I don't do it in here, I always track it. And then I haven't done anything else with these readathon pages, because I'm still trying to decide if I want to put out a t explicit TBR, or just write what I've done. And then here is my November wrap-up page. I think it turned out really well. I'm still figuring out how I want to do like the numbers on the acorns. Um, I'm just indecisive about that and I like to think about things for a little bit. But there are all my readings. It's been a pretty good month. I've given most things four stars, which is definitely not like me, but that's also because I read three volumes of Saga. So, but you know, it's okay. I am really tired since it is after nine and I usually go to bed at like 10. But yeah, so I don't know if I'm going to read any more Three Dark Crowns. I will update you tomorrow if I do. But for now, I'm just going to say goodnight and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, so it is now Tuesday, no Wednesday. And I am just laying in bed. I had my animals. I have my dog and my cats went in and out. But yeah, I thought she was out the door for a second. But I am still reading. Three Dark Crowns, I'm around the 230 page mark. Um, so basically after what happened yesterday, I kind of hate one of the queens and I'm not really the biggest fan of the other ones. There's really only one queen that I like can tolerate, which this book it just has unlikable characters, just, just like what it is. But I don't think I ever told you guys what this is about now that I know, so I'm going to tell you guys that now. So this book is following three queens who were separated when they were six years old and sent to different parts of the island of Fenburn to be taught their different gifts. So one is a naturalist queen who can like call to animals and plants and stuff, whose name is Arsinoe, but she doesn't have that gift. Um, yet, and we don't know if she ever will, and then there's Catherine, who is the Poisoner Queen, who also doesn't, it's not I don't know, she's not, I don't really know how the poison gift works, but, like, she's been trained in poisoning from, like, the Poisoner City people, but, like, apparently she's still giftless, I don't really know how that works. And then there's, uh, Mirabella, who is the Elemental Queen, who has one of the strongest gifts, so, yeah. So she can control like all of the different elements. So we are now coming to, I think it's their 16th birthday. It's like the beginning starts at their 15th, but on their 16th birthday, they have to like kill each other until there's only one queen left. I am now over halfway through and I am going to try to finish this today. But like I said, 
now that I like only can tolerate one of the sisters like it's not as fun as when I was just like getting to know them and I was like not annoyed at one and a half of them because one of them I'm just like eh about and then the other one I like actively don't like but yeah it's a very political fantasy and it really goes into that and like all of the other players in the game like it's not just about these three queens it's about all of these people who have a stake in it and like you know their different mentors and stuff and it's really interesting I do enjoy political fantasies so yeah but right now I'm taking a break and I'm gonna watch uh, Becca's new reading vlog that she just posted and then I'll get some more reading in <laughs> excuse my hair and my face I just showered because I've been sick all morning and I didn't get a chance to shower so yeah I need to braid my hair in order for it to look decent for the next day or two but besides the point I have a lot of reading updates for you so last night I ended up finishing three dark crowns by Kendar Blake I have mixed feelings about this and I haven't rated it yet because I usually like to give books a little bit of time after I've read them for them to fully digest and for me to think back without like being in the moment unless that moment is like a five star read. But yeah, so for this I really enjoyed the political aspects and I loved seeing like, you know, all the different players in the game, but they're all the almost all the characters are unlikable like that's just how it is so usually I'd like to have at least like one character that I'm like rooting for and like you would think this is like a competition I'd be like rooting for one person to win but like not really I think I will continue on with the series just because especially where it left off was very interesting but I it's not like a favorite book or anything I think I'm at like a 3.5 for this but like I said that's just an early rating I will give myself a few days to think about it so after I read that this morning I started I don't have the dust jacket on it but I started a million Junes by Emily Henry and this book is a I believe it's magical realism I haven't read magical realism so I'm just guessing but it's a magical realism story about these two families who have like an age old feud about like and you know think that if they go near each other then something bad's gonna happen because there was a lot of times when things bad did happen after they um, came in contact with each other or something and things when one thing happens to one family like one bad thing another bad thing like a different thing will happen to the other family and it's just interesting and I say it's magical realism because there's like ghosts mentioned and like spirits and like a weird fantastical thing that happens but it, it's more a metaphor I guess for what's happening to our main character. So this is our following our two main characters uh Jack O'Donnell who goes by June because she's a girl but she's a fourth Jack anyways and Sal and they are both the descendants of those two families and one day they come into contact with each other and they just think well maybe something is going on isn't going on like sal isn't big on the whole like we need to stay away from each other even though june has been told that her entire life so she is like i have to stay away from you like only bad things will happen if we hang out and so it's sort of about that and it's just very interesting i'm loving the writing in here it's very lyrical and very metaphorical and deep and like I wasn't gonna tab this book but literally right when I started it on the dedication page it says like for specific people in her life and then says and for all those who find ways to go on better days are coming for our little hearts and 
if you guys don't know, I've been going through a bit of a rough patch for the past few months, and I've always struggled with, like, depression and anxiety, but, like, it's been bad, so, like, things like that really help, I guess. And also there was another quote, none of this is spoilery because these are all like in the first few pages. So her dad died 10 years ago. So she's saying, she says, but some people are too alive to fully die. Their story's too big to dis disappear. He was one of them. I see traces of him all over our magic house. I hear him in the crack and groan of the floorboards at the sum as the summer nights stretch on. Can visualize him sitting on the foot of my bed saying, other houses have support beams and foundations. Ours has bones and a heartbeat. And I just thought that was so beautiful. I can definitely relate to what she's saying. And like we have um, my grandmother's car, like when she was getting really sick with cancer and she couldn't drive anymore, she um, ended up selling her, her car to like my mom and my mom like paid off the rest of it. Um, but the seat will just move back all the time by itself. And we, my mom always says that that's um, my grandmother that passed away. And obviously, like, it's probably, like, a mechanical technical issue. But, like, that's what they say, we say. And so I can really relate to what she's saying about feeling him still being there 10 years, you know, after the fact that he's died and stuff. So I think it's just really beautiful. It is going over the topic of grief. And I think that that's always good and especially in YA to help young adults through those tough times of losing a parent or a relative or a friend whoever it may be so yeah I'm really enjoying this I'm on page 100 and I read this 100 pages pretty quickly so I'm definitely going to try to get a huge chunk of this book done today but I have to do um, some chaperone thing for my sister so she can do her senior powder puff which I had to do yesterday too which is when I got all the reading done so we'll try to bring this and read there later. But for now, I just have some work stuff to do. So I will see you guys later. So I'm like crying, but it's fine. I just finished A Million Junes by Emily Henry. And like, I mean, I literally just finished it. And all I want to do is hug it. This book is beautiful. Uh... The writing in here is amazing and it is such a like wonderful look into grief and mourning and oh my god there's so so many things in here that I just like tabbed okay not, not that many I could have tabbed more but uh, I don't know why but this this book just really means a lot to me which I wasn't I wasn't anticipating when I first like read the synopsis and stuff. I had just seen that people were giving it like four stars. But oh my gosh. I think it's a five star. I I like this got me to cry, which I don't cry a lot in books. But oh man. I, um, yeah, I, this is, like, all I've done today is what, watch booktube and read the back 230 pages of this, but, oh my gosh, it's so good. <laughs>
but I don't know. It was just eh for me, so I ended up giving it three stars. So today, my sister and I took the dog for a bit of a walk this morning and went down to like soccer fields and stuff by my house. And then I came back and I was up like until midnight watching live PD last night. Probably not the best decision, but that means I'm really tired. So I am honestly contemplating taking a nap, which I don't nap. So that is saying something, but I started reading one day in December on my laptop because I have it available through Libby. I do have two contemporaries, but I have physically, but I was thinking that I could get through a romance faster slash I was just interested in a Christmas book. But okay, so one day in December is following our main characters, Louise and Jack, who one day like see each other when she's on a bus and he's at the bus stop, but then they don't actually end up meeting. And it's sort of about Louise wanting to find him. Um, yeah, so I'm, like, not loving it. It also, I should have known because it also said for, like, fans of Love Actually, which I kind of hate Love Actually. Because I don't like a lot of the storylines um, involving cheating and stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm like over 12% in, I can check. I'm 14% through and it's just okay. It's 400 pages so that means I've read over 50 pages. Um, but I don't know. I did just download Fence Flame 1 because that would count for Buzzwordathon and Contemporary Thon Weekend which is why I'm trying to read Contemporary. But if I don't like, if I keep not liking One Day in December I'm just gonna nix it um because i have other books that i can read that i think i will enjoy so i will keep you guys updated on what i'm reading and i'll talk to you guys in a little hey guys so it's now almost eight o'clock and i am 45 percent of the way through one day in december i decided to stick with it because i had read like over 50 pages and I, and it, it is growing on me i do like it more i just can't get over the like cheating aspect of the book which is like you know what it is what it is but um yeah I'm planning to get as far into this as I can I am watching live PD so I'm just reading on the commercial breaks I just need to finish it by tomorrow so we're good but it is a 400 page book so I've read almost 200 pages today so that's not too shabby and this is my fourth book for the read um, the buzzword readathon and my first book for contemporary thon. So to sort of bump those numbers up, I will probably pick up Fence Volume 2 tomorrow, sometime when I'm like watching football or something. So the plan is to just get as much of one day in December done today as possible. Hey guys, so it is now a cold and rainy Sunday and I have just been hanging out in bed this morning. I ended up getting 79% into uh, one day in December last night and then finishing it earlier. Um, I'm giving it a three because even though I was able to read it quickly and it read like a movie and it was entertaining, I really did not enjoy that the majority of the book is emotional and physical cheating and I, I talked about this in the past, that's just not something that flies with me. So, yeah. But since today is, you know, Sunday, football day, I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done. So, I, like I said, I do have Fence Volume 2 on my phone so I can just read that and that'll make five things read for the week. But we shall see. I also have to update my bullet journal because I haven't updated it at all since the readathon started and I need to put in what I've read in my pages. But I do know that I've read over a thousand pages. I've read 1400 pages or so, I believe, which it's not too shabby. And I've read three whole books and a graphic novel. So I'm pretty proud of myself. I thought I was going to be more productive this weekend, but it's all good. And yeah, I will catch you guys later. Hey guys, so I did end up reading Fence Volume 2. And this is a graphic novel series about fencing. I don't know if sports graphic novels are my thing, but they're just okay for me, so I ended up giving it three stars. And I'm gonna wrap up this vlog here because I'm not gonna pick up something else because the Patriots just started and they won't be done until like 
seven thirty, eight o'clock, and I would just rather have an easy night and not try to like force and reading an entire book. So I'm gonna wrap up my reading for the week. So I'm actually gonna use my bullet journal spread because I just, I just did it. It's so pretty. All right. So first, I read Three Dark Hounds by Kendara Blake, and I ended up giving that three stars. Then I read one of my new favorite books, A Million Junes by Emily Henry, which I gave five stars. That I read Paper Girls Volume One, um, which I gave three stars. Then I read One Day in December by Josie Silver, which I gave three stars. And Fence, I read Fence Volume Two by C.S. Picot, Joanna. Joanna, two different Joannas. I'm sorry, I can't read their last names on here. And I gave that three stars as well. So it was an okay readathon. I did have that one favorite. And yeah, I did do some work in my bullet journal. So I'm going to leave you guys with a little bit of a flip through with that to some music. And I'll see you guys in another video soon. Bye.